listen, this is where we just go crazy. And we're yeah. going to talk about everything. Yeah, we're going to talk about everything. 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 Okay, so right. we, we did watch this movie twice. Yeah. We watched yes. it the first time Christmas Day. Right. And it took us a while to process this because we were first, like I said, we were like, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. This is fine. Yeah. But luckily, we segued away to a better movie. A more entertaining movie. Which I was terrified to pop in because I've never heard of this. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, white man learns the, the Japanese laws and rules and he shows them how it's done. Oh no, I don't want to do this. But... So right after 84, we're like, oh, well, that was fun. All right, what's next? We go to The Challenge starring Scott Glenn and Toshiro Manfude. And this blew us away. We absolutely love this movie. We might do a review on it. But... The reason I'm bringing it up is that this entertained us oh, no. way more oh, no. than Wonder Woman 84. Oh, no. Way more. Like, this blew us away. Just, well, I'll throw this for the movie dojo fans right there, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so the movie, like, like we were saying, the movie yeah. opens up with this really goofy, fun, lighthearted montage of of all this wacky hijinks opening up, you know, right. going on in the city where Wonder Woman's swooping in and and saving all these people from, right. again, wacky hijinks. And the whole thing with it being set in the 80s is that obviously there's no cell phones, security right. cameras are not too big of an issue when she goes into the mall right. and she stops this robbery. And she takes out the cameras but Very first. few sec cam yeah. security cameras are mm -hmm. there, she takes them out. Every time she sees little kids that are looking at her with wonder and amazement, she goes, shh, don't tell anybody. And <laughs> I, I, I get it's, it. It, yeah, it was on purpose. I get it. Wonder Woman's supposed to be this really positive yeah. role model for little yeah. girls. Now, if the whole movie was like that, that would have been kind of an, a problem. Yeah, I think. it happens a couple of times where, yeah. especially with little girls, little girls are looking at her like, oh my God, yeah. it's a girl. It's a big yeah. girl doing things. It's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I get it. I was fine. a little girl once. I believe it or not, <laughs> I get it. And so... We're, we're, you know, we're, we're going along. We, 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 we figure out, we're introduced slowly to Diana's life now in 1984. We yeah. realize that she has not yet gotten over uh, Steve Trevor. Right. Um, she, you know, we catch her looking up into the sky and she sees this big jet flying over and you, I, to the movie's credit, we don't see any cheesy flashbacks of her looking up when he blows up in the sky <laughs> for screaming and, uh, and raging out to the movie's That would have been hilarious. Luckily, we didn't get any of that crap. And you, you, yeah. you basically surmise that, oh, yeah, she's missing Steve. You, you get all that just yeah. from visuals. So I'm like, thank you. We didn't need any of that. Right. And you see pictures of her life from the past few years and whatnot. Right. And you find out that she works at, I believe it's the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, has a, a, a pretty good gig going on there. And then you're introduced to the Kristen Wiig character. Before we go forward, I enjoyed the opening uh, contest on Themyscira. That's I enjoyed true. that. And I thought that was fun. It was it was a fun watch. In retrospect, could they have cut it out? No, they could have. And here's the thing. What do you think? And here's the here's think? the reason. I thought it was fun. Hans Zimmer's score is amazing. And here's the reason I don't. I'm glad that they kept it. Yeah. I would rather have a few minutes. Yeah. On Themyscira. Yeah. Then nothing on Themyscira in a right. Wonder Woman film. Right. You're, it's Wonder Woman. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a flashback. And yeah, you never go back there. But it's Wonder Woman. Do you yeah. really want to have a Wonder Woman film with no reference to Themyscira right. at all? And it was also an allegory for a later lesson that she was going to have right. to revisit in her life. And right. it was a theme. It was an mm -hmm. ongoing theme about right. truth and lies and how nothing good can come from lies and living in lies right right and, and they introduce the golden armor there like the, they talk they, they mention it for yes. the first time yes they do and i like that scene a lot because it's fun it's fun being on you know themiscara it's like when you're watching a thor movie earth is boring you want to hang out in asgard right right uh but um i enjoyed that scene because it shows the hero fail right and though that's the best man i right. love that i love that stuff so back then, to kristen wig right so kristen wig shows up now the kristen wig character Something I will give the movie a little bit of credit for was that this, the way they wrote her, she very easily, and she, she did, they very, 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 very much towed the line of her being Jamie Foxx's Electro from yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Or uh, Guy Pierce from Iron Man 3. Right, from Amazing Spider-Man those, ver those versions of this type of character right. was insulting. Right. Insulting. And it was very close because yeah. we were in a position where, like, Electro... 
uh, Jamie Foxx's character meets Spider-Man in the street one right. day and he becomes this massive su- he's already a super fan but he's a super fan and right. you know the whole reason he he goes crazy is because Spider-Man didn't remember him right. and the 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 score is like he lied to me he died it's really bad it's if you saw the movie and you've listened to the score you know what I'm talking yeah. about yeah. but this movie easily could have gone that route and they didn't what I did like is that for a while, uh, Barbara and Diana, Barbara's Kristen's, Kristen Wiig's character, mm-hmm. Barbara and Diana were close. They were, well, not close, but they were friends for a while. You know, it was very awkward at first because right. Diana meets Barbara. You, you get, you get this, you get this uh, opening scene with, with Barbara where she walks into the Smithsonian, she drops these things and you, you see a scene where these guys walk past her and she's like, Hey, a little help here. And they just ignore her. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Diana walks up to her and helps her and you, you get it. Nobody recognizes her. Nobody acknowledges her. People don't care about her cause she's whatever. And yeah. you, you get, she lives a very lonely life right. because she, she's unpopular and whatever and whatnot. And Hey, I'm hot now. <laughs> I'm hot now. I'm hot now. As somebody, Come on. As somebody who notice me, as somebody who, pay attention to me. As somebody who's worn glasses, for their entire adult <laughs> life and who's worn glasses for 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 more than half of their life i can tell you that it's bull it's, <laughs> anyway um so the problem for me though is kristen wig is fine even when she's nerdy and yeah, yeah, you know, if i saw she's cute and it's like and it's almost like what you call from the carrie remake Oh yeah, Chloe Grace Moretz. Oh yeah, we love was, Chloe. Yeah, that but was, then not once did we buy her as a. Oh, that's a. I'm an outsider. Oh, no, it didn't work. But, it, but, anyway. but here's the thing with 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 Barbara's character and the Cheetah character in general. Still not as insulting as you getting your powers and it fixed the fucking gap in your tooth. Yeah. Okay. And that's not that insulting. And that's and that's the thing. And I I, uh, I struggled for a little bit with this film. And there were there were certain things that happened in this movie that again told the line between Amazing Spider-Man two and even Captain Mistakes were made, and I I was I was I had to sit there and think about it. Okay, why did this one not really annoy me, but those movies did? And here here this is the only thing that I could come up with is that at the end of the day, this one was just done a little bit better. Barbara was given more character. She was given a little more heart. And she was given a little more motivation. She was given a little more humanity. And the whole trade-off when you start learning about the the MacGuffin wish grant yeah. is that when you when you when you make a wish, it it's the monkey's paw. You get the wish, but you lose something in return. And in Barbara's case, she basically loses her humanity in a, in a sense. She she loses her reason. She loses her warmth. She loses that spark, and she loses her ability to you know see reason in, in a lot of ways because she does kind of lose her mind not crazy but she does lose her ability to be that warm human being that diana was friends with and you you know when you see the film you understand what i'm talking about more but what kind of bothered me and captain marvel was really really guilty of this and this movie was semi guilty of this real talk here oh real, real talk here I know. <laughs> Go ahead. Strap in, folks. Hey, be, you're here for the honesty, right? Maybe a little personal. Oh, boy. I know. All right, go ahead. Nothing good can come of this, <laughs> I tell you. Go ahead. Okay. Just because things are relatable. Uh huh. And this is personal talk here. Okay. Just because things are relatable doesn't necessarily mean it's something I need to see on screen. Mm. Okay. I've, I've lived the life. Okay, I have what's known as RBF, which is called resting bitch face. <laughs> so, believe me when I tell you, I have lived that life where random people, including men, mostly men, mostly men, have been like, smile. Why aren't you smiling? Why don't you smile? And believe me, it's annoying as fuck. <laughs> it's not charming. It's, 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 it's just as irritating as it's, it's very invasive. Let's just put it that way. You could be having a normal day. Right. You could be having, you minding your own business. You could be having a perfectly fine day, but because your face looks a certain way and somebody just comes up to you and says something like that, it could ruin your fucking day. Yeah. And it puts you on the defensive. It puts you on guard. And it basically is like, 
who the hell are you to come up and tell you don't know anything about me right you don't know me you've just offended me you've you've come into my personal space and you're basically telling me what to do based on how i look it's like that's rude mm -hmm. so i've lived that i've also lived the life where i have I've lived that life where I've been ignored. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've lived that life where people have just walked right past me and not acknowledged me, where I've seen them acknowledge somebody that looked way better than I have and have held the door open for somebody else or have completely not acknowledged my existence because I was not the socially acceptable, attractive person in the room. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've lived that life. Or you, or you trying to talk or say something and they just totally Completely like, you, ignored. You even, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have lived that life mm -hmm. consistently. Right. Okay. But for that to be somebody's motivation. And in that case, in this case, it is Barbara's motivation that once she gets this, I, her wish is I want to be attractive. And I want to be like, I want to be like Diana. I want to be cool. I want to be this and I want to be that. And her sole motivation is that now that she is attractive and adored and looked at by people and acknowledged right. by people, I understand it. I get it. But for that to be her sole motivation, it's, it's a little it's, insulting. And it's a little, that's the best you can do so that's for the a supervillain. That's the insulting part of it. It's a little, it's right. a little like, that's the best you can do for Wonder Woman's arch nemesis. That's one of Wonder Woman's arch nemesis in the comic book, from what I've heard. Right. I'm not. She's a, one of the main. Yeah. She's one of the big ones, yeah. from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's her actual motivation in the comic book, well, then I stand corrected. <laughs> then I'll shut my face. <laughs> But I'm just saying, it's like, you know, when when Catwoman came out, that Holly Berry abomination, <laughs> Sharon Stone's motivation was that she wanted to be hot forever. And so she was this makeup guru and she wanted to have porcelain-like skin. And so she came up with this beauty product that made her skin hard as a rock or blah, blah. I'm like, is this all yeah. we are, ladies? <laughs> Are we just women who want to be hot forever? Is that really all there is to us? It's like, I don't know. I felt like her motivation could have been a little bit better than, I don't want to be ignored and I want to be hot. <laughs> I understand well, it. Right. I get it. but Right. I, well, I kind of looked at it as everything. It, it was a wish. I kind of looked at it. Uh, it's just a trivial wish. Because everybody's wishes in the movie were just like, I want a million dollars, I want nuclear warheads, I want, you know, I want to be famous, you know. And people are just just kind of blindly making these wishes, you know. I think, it, I kind of looked at it like that. Like, even when, you know, it's like the transformation of her, literally, like, I took the glasses off. Like, yeah. she looks exactly the same. She just has tight clothes on now. And she takes the glasses off, and now she's now she's she has, hot. She has more makeup. It's on. like we could have had she a, has a little more makeup. We could have had a, a little bit better transformation. Oh, but she's you know she can walk good in heels now. She, she can walk good in heels. Oh man, she's, she's a little more makeup on. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's all it's all subjective. Like the wishes are very in a roundabout way. Right. Like the guy he he wishes for coffee, and instead of coffee disappearing out of thin air. Some guy walks into the right. room and says, hey. "Oh, hey, some guy he ordered coffee, but he changed his mind or whatever. Who right. wants coffee?" Right. And the trade-off is that, I think the trade-off for him was that the coffee burned his mouth or something like that. Right. Um, and I get it. Right. I get it. Her, her, you know, her wish was very in a roundabout way. It's like, yeah, she just changed her clothes a little bit and <laughs> took her glasses off. And so, and now she has more confidence and right. that's all at the end of the day. That's all it is. But right. her motivation really was, right. she wasn't willing to let anything go right. because... She was seeing all this shit going on around her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even Diana. Right. She saw all the shit going on around her, and mm -hmm. she realized she had to let the love of her life go. Right. And Kristen Wiig just didn't want to not be hot anymore. <laughs> she she couldn't let her hotness go. Right. <laughs> and not be ignored. Oh, the world's about to come to an end, but I need to be hot. Right. Uh, at first, I was like, okay, every single man on the face of the planet... <laughs> Was looking at you know Kristen Wiig and was like hey hey woo hey 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 like every guy in the in the in the universe uh -huh. was like checking her out. I that was a little annoying, but at at the same time I was like okay it's the wishing stone. 
making her noticeable. Uh -huh. But then you go straight to Diana walking around, and everywhere she's walking around at the party, everywhere, everywhere she's walking around, it's the same shit. Mm -hmm. Hey, dude, Diana, 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 Diana. Diana. <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, this is fucking annoying. It's like. Not every guy in the world is is like this. Oh, according to this movie, <laughs> it's like besides Chris Pine and the homeless guy. Yeah, like every guy in the universe. Hey, hey, woo, ass tits. Hey, like yeah. every guy is like that rude. Like every guy in the world. Everybody. I don't remember in the first movie. I don't remember in the first movie. Wonder Woman, you know, Wonder Woman walking everywhere, and every single guy in the in the whole movie, the first movie, was going, hey, woo, hey. Well, you know, it's. Because you're woke now. <laughs> no, I don't want to go broke. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like things are a little too... <sighs> it would have made more sense if it was just her. Well, but this, no, that's the thing. You know, Diana Diana is supposed to be like this, this example of, you know... Yeah. You know, everybody wants her. Right. And that's why Kristen Wiig wants to be like her. And so when, you know, Diana had it happening to her all the time, so it made sense that when Kristen Wiig wants to be like her, it happens to her the same way. I guess. But it's just, it's just annoying. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's so blatant. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it, it, it does seem like every single man in this world is a jerk, except for Chris Pine. And, and the homeless and guy. And the homeless guy. It's like, <laughs> did we have to be that ham-fisted with this? I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. Seems I don't like know. You just kind of sound like you want to lower your rating now. No, it's not, <laughs> no but see, that's the thing. It's like I said, the movie, the movie had some good qualities to it. Yeah, it like did. I said, the movie. It's had, still a fun superhero. The movie, movie had a lot of yeah. heart to it, and again, yeah. the performances. Yeah. Everybody, like I said, everybody came to play. Right. You know, Pedro. I like I like Pedro's uh, character. I mean, I liked I like I mean, when you go down, like ten years from now, no one's probably going to remember him as this amazing villain. But I kind of liked it that it was a little different. And I kind of liked that he had layers to his character when it would show him being so obsessed, you know, with the, with his power and him trying to gain power. But yet, at the same time, he's having his issues with his son. Yeah. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. yeah his his character, you know, they, they wrote it as such so that, again, this movie, this movie did seem to be focused more on the heart aspects and mm -hmm. the... The, the humanity aspects more than the spectacle and the action. Right. That's that's why in this movie nobody really dies in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like it's, yeah. You know, everybody comes together. You know, humanity for the most part revokes all their wishes in the end. Right. You know, even though that that wishing stone logic kind of implodes on itself with the whole everybody has to revoke their wishes. You know, yeah, it's like none of the, convenient. None of the, none of the, <laughs> the whole thing of the wishing stone is that, you know, when you're learning about the wishing stone is that the civilizations that have come across it in the past, right. they've always destroyed themselves because of it. Right. And be, it was because they used it and they were unable or unwilling, they were unwilling to renounce their wishes. Right. And that was the whole thing with this case, Everybody, because Diana used her lasso of truth to have, make everybody see what they were doing and to be like, hey, you're not alone. Everybody's scared. Everybody wants something better. But at the end of the day, we're all in this together. Blah, blah, blah. Look at how we're all the same. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Everybody renounces their wishes at the end. But if you think about it, Pedro is now the wishing stone. So if he renounced his wish, right. nobody else should have needed to renounce their right. wish because he was the one who caused all the wishes in the first place. Yeah. But Everybody renounces their wish. He renounces their wish, except for Kristen Wiig. That's left ambiguous on purpose. So if she didn't renounce her wish. Why she look human? Well, she, that would have made sense. Okay. Because if he renounced his wish, her second wish would have been renounced. Mm. She technically could still have that first wish because she used the stone originally. Right. See how the logic there. And that's another well, thing. That's another thing with this with this with this movie. It, there's some things I let slide with this movie yeah. because right. we've kind of come to expect a little too much logic in mm. comic book films because right. you've had you've been spoiled by like the Dark Knight trilogy and with like the 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 last two Captain America films where even though Civil Civil War was very, very comic booky, but Winter Soldier was not. Um, there's, there's some comic book movies out there that are like so steeped in, in real world scenarios that we kind of forget that comic book movies 
inherently need to have fantasy elements in it. That's right. why, like, with when Thor Ragnarok came out, it was like, whoa, comic book. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, like, especially, like, Guardians of the Galaxy and, you know. Well, it's different genres of comic book movies. Yeah. They're, so they're, it's like, it's it's, it's fantasy. It so you're gonna, should be okay to have yeah. these fantasy elements. Yeah. That's why when I saw Sh- yeah. Wonder Woman lassoing lightning, it didn't bother me. Or la- lassoing, uh, you know, clouds. clouds. Yeah. It doesn't bother no. me that she's doing stuff like that because it's like, you know, it's, yeah. come on. It's like. It's Octopus fan. playing the drums. It doesn't bother me. It does not bother me. It's like I have to let some things go when it right. comes to if I want if I yeah. want a fun time, mm-hmm. especially with the DCEU. DCEU needs more stuff like this for me. For my, it's right. like let Batman have his thing. Yeah. Let v- Superman variety. have his thing. Variety. But let yeah. let these other characters have yeah. their own universes. Right. And there's no reason why in certain times they can't all come together and on their own footing and do their own thing. But let them go off and do their own thing sometimes. If you can accept her blocking bullets with her gauntlets, if you can accept that, yeah. but not accept her using her lasso to grab bullets yeah. or lassoing rockets, <laughs> it's like yeah, stuff it's like that. fantasy. Yeah, it's like stuff like now, that. Now, the CGI of her running fast, they need to stop that. Stop. Yeah. Where she looks like she's floating. I, I think stop what it. They're, I think what they're trying to go for is that she's running so fast that her gravity doesn't affect her because when you're running gravity pulls you down and you're bouncing up and down well show show her from the waist up which they did the problem is it just doesn't look right it's like i get what you're going for but it doesn't look right it looks funny so don't just don't do it waist up yeah it looks like it it looks like what he uses the example the the donner version the first movie superman yeah it looked like Clark Kent trying to outrun the train in the first superman movie it looks silly it looks like somebody's on a wire being held up yeah Suspended and they're just doing. It just this. looks funny. Just it looks they stop, they just so stop don't, doing. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, some of the things that you know, listening to some people's grievances with the movie now that we've watched it on our yeah. own, it people have a lot of issues with things, and it's like I get it. You know, some people don't want a lot of these things in the comic book movies, but it's like eh, it doesn't bother me so much. Um, one of the things that surprised me that people had issue with was the score. Like some people are like. Oh, the score, Hans Zimmer, why did he come back? There are really? Some, there are some musical Dude, cues Dude, it's like one of the best parts of the movie. Some musical cues just didn't make sense. Um, something that did, I did find curious that he did use was um, Adagio in D minor from John Murphy, which was something that he wrote, John Murphy wrote for the film Sunshine, which was the scene that uh, when she finally learned how to fly on her own. Right. They, he used that instead of writing his own piece. But don't get me wrong. It worked. It worked very, very well. It's, right. a, it's a very good piece of music. Yeah. And, yeah, but funny thing is Kick-Ass used that too. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's a piece of music that you'll hear in, in uh, trailers and whatnot. Um, mm. Different trailers. Yeah. Um, but that he would use that. Um, it was a little strange, but I liked it. It worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but some people had an issue with the fact that he brought back a piece from BBS. Now... Why did that not bother me? Um, I think at that point in the movie, we were kind of just go. Like, remember when we watched it the first time? We were kind of just going with it. Okay, this and is, it was supposed to be a heartwarming well, moment, and she's monologuing, talking to the people, trying to get them to to take back but their wishes. This is why it didn't bother me. Now, okay. some people were complaining, and that's when that song came up. Right? This is why people were complaining from what you told okay. me because right. I didn't read. I didn't read why people were. Okay. But you told me is that why did they use this? Batman was nowhere near the scene. This is Batman's music. Why why were they why why did he use this? This is Batman's music, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, well, to an extent, yeah, this was associated with Batman. Mm-hmm. But if you look at what the piece of music is called, it's called Beautiful Lie. What is the theme of this movie? It's dealing with lies mm-hmm. and truths. Right. And facing the consequences of of living with lies and seeing that you can't nothing good comes from lies right. and you need to you know face it and you need to just you know mm-hmm. go on yeah. and you need to you know you need to you know have the truth with you and mm-hmm. what was the line nothing good comes from lies mm-hmm. um, and so for him to reincorporate beautiful lie into that scene. I thought it was completely appropriate and 
I was like, I was cheering. I was like, oh my God, this is why I love the fact that Hans Zimmer is involved. Like I said, he, he did Man of Steel, he co-wrote BVS, and you know, say what you will about this particular line of, of cinema, whether you love it or hate it, I love the fact that we have this connective tissue of music and it's something that I've kind of had issue with with the MCU is that very few films have that musical connective tissue. Only really the Avengers have that The tissue. Avengers theme is like the only consistent, yeah. Yeah, it's very rare. It's like Thor Ragnarok used a sliver of music from Patrick Doyle's Thor, the very first music, and they used a sliver of music from the, the second Thor, Thor Dark World, in, in, in the score for Thor, uh, for Thor Ragnarok. And, uh, you know, for somebody who loves music scores so much, um, to have connective tissue like that, you know, have Man of Steel music appear in BBS and to have Wonder Woman's theme that so many people hate, but I absolutely adore, appear in her own film and appear again in this version and to have these, this connective tissue throughout these films, again, whether you love them or hate them, I, I love stuff like that. I eat it up. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it was completely appropriate that he used that piece. Right. Um, so again, I love the score. I'm heartbroken that the reincorporated music was not used and was not available on the score. I did buy the score digitally. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately that version wasn't on there. It wasn't on there. Yeah. That sucks. Um, but the rest of the score is good. It is. It's a very good score. So was there like anything else that we had issue with? Well, the CGI, uh, sometimes was really good. Um, and, uh, I liked Patty Jenkins take on, you know, her getting her powers or, 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 or leveling up, if you will. Like, I like the scene where she's flying when a woman's flying. I like the scene where she's turns the jet invisible. Right. You know, it's, it's fun. But, um, some of the, C again, some of the CGI was good and some of it was a little wonky, uh, especially with Cheetah. Like since we saw that trailer, they didn't improve at all no. on uh, her look. Uh, the close-ups of her, we actually didn't have a problem with. Yeah. Because it kind of looked like it was a little bit of a mixture of practical makeup. A yeah, little. She, she did with have, CGI. She did have makeup, yeah. So that was actually not bad. Uh, but the fight itself, it's uh, I think fans, fans hate it. But I think if it wasn't in there, they would hate it even more. Because you can't build up the Cheetah character and have them not fight. Yeah. I think fans would have been like... Man, they didn't introduce her and they didn't do anything at the end. Well, especially because they only had the one fight in the White House when she right. wasn't the Cheetah character. Right. Where she Which was, was the better her. fight, in my opinion. Right. And then there was no end fight right. after that. Right. She did not fight Pedro Pascal. No. There was, yeah, just, they there was been, just the dialogue. Yeah. I mean, even though the fight didn't look that great, uh, I think fans would have been more pissed, in my opinion, if it, if it wasn't even in there. Because, again, when you were talking about the action earlier, there's really only... if you. You don't count the race if you don't count the uh, the opening mall action sequence. That that was I don't really count that. Really, we only have three <laughs> action set pieces in this movie. We only have three, which is really bad. Um, I guess they counted Themyscira as one, even though no, that wasn't not for action. me. Not for me. It no. was more like a, it was it was a contest. It yeah, was, yeah, it was it's American Gladiators. Yeah, it was MXC. <laughs> Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, they, even though it wasn't the greatest fight ever, and I kind of feel like her armor was kind of wasted, uh, cause she didn't really use it. She only really used it to, to, for defensive purposes. She didn't really like, like use the wings or something like that to fight. And then she, and then she just, she, dropped, like, tore then she ended up just dropping. Well, them. cause she had tore through it like so fast. Uh, uh, but I mean, if that wasn't there, fans would have been even more pissed. And then we would only had two action set pieces but i liked i did even though i missed the sword and shield you didn't even know the action set pieces weren't as badass or intense as the first i did enjoy the action set piece on the on the road i like that there was creativity involved like you know grabbing the bullets riding the rocket pushing the truck as you know as you know as defensive purposes while they're firing at her you know and then she was in danger i, yeah. I enjoyed her being in danger. Yeah, the monkey's pie element yeah. for her was that she she wished for Steve Trevor to come back to life right. before she knew what the before she knew that the MacGuffin would actually grant wishes. Right. So he comes back to life, and uh, the trade off is that she starts to slowly lose her powers. Right. And so 
she starts getting shot. She yeah. starts getting hurt. This is all good things. So she, her getting she, her, her being vulnerable. She starts losing her strength. She starts mm -hmm. actually bleeding. Yeah. And uh, Cheetah in the White House kicks her ass. Yeah. This is before she becomes full fledged right. Cheetah, and uh, so she is getting hurt. She's looking yeah. sick, you know, mm -hmm. because she's just getting so beat up and bleeding and all that. Yeah. So it was it was good. Again, you know, you don't always get to see your your heroes, especially your super superheroes, uh, get their asses. And there was like a that. good line there. She's like, what is it costing you, Barbara? Why are you doing this? And then Barbara goes, what is it costing you, bitch? <laughs> you know, that was a that was I mean maybe you should throw in the bitch for fun. But uh but that was pretty, that was a good line. But I, I like that fight in the White House because, hey, we're finally getting back to hand-to-hand -hand combat. And it was filmed well, and it was fun to watch. Like I said, fun. This mm. is the theme. Fun is a big difference between fun and badass. Mm. We, it wasn't shit. We didn't hate it. Right. But it was fun. Yeah. Uh, but I did miss that sword and shield, man. I did miss, the, you know, the badassity of the first film. Uh, but I think... Unfortunately, the more you think about it, all of the action sequences where we wanted her to have weapons, she couldn't use weapons because of the plot and the storyline was she didn't want to hurt innocents. Mm -hmm. You even have that one scene where Chris Pine picks up a sword and she's like, no, they're innocents. They don't know what they're doing. So that kind of negates her even having or using any weapons. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why we didn't have weapons in this. I get it. It makes sense for the plot. But as a viewer, it's not as fun. It's not as fun. It's not as badass. Yeah. Another highlight slash issue of the movie is Chris Pine's character, you know, Steve Trevor. It was great seeing him again. He was funny. He was charming. Again, him and Gal Gadot have great chemistry, right? It works. It worked in the first movie. It's one of the highlights. Even people who hated Wonder Woman, the first one, they love them together. And that's all good and fun. And you get the funny montage and, you know, he's, he's hilarious and all that. But at the same time, you have the you know you have the idea of him <clears throat> of his soul basically being brought back into another man's body. So forget the innuendos of <laughs> Wonder Woman taking advantage of somebody else. Which let's be honest, nobody gives a shit, right? Because it's a hot chick, and if you know no one, you know people are gonna be like nice, like no one no one's gonna care, right? Obviously, if the roles were reversed. There'd be a lot of problems. People would be going crazy, right? But let's just not just think about the sex part. But what about the part where, if you think about it, all the action set pieces Chris Pine was in on the street, the White House fight, technically that guy's body was in danger the whole time. Yeah. So when you think too much about it, it's like, uh, and all they had to fucking do, all they had to do was you get the MacGuffin, you do, hey, I want Steve Trevor back. I want my hot piece of man ass back, right? And he boobly boobly appears, and there's that's it. It's solved. The problem solved. Nukes appear. When people take their wish back, nukes disappear. Yeah. It's so easy and quick and simple. Why did they bring in Lifetime Hallmark good looking <laughs> actor guy? Why did they bring him in and make things complicated when all they had to do was have Chris Pine show up? Hey, Diana, how's it going? I, the only, That's so easy. It's such an easy fix. The only thing I can think of is that because so many things were done in the roundabout way. That's the only thing I can come up with. Hmm. Where, again, like Kristen Wiig's character, right. her, her hotness was subtle. Right. And like the coffee example, it was a roundabout way. Mm. The coffee didn't just appear out of thin. That's literally the only reason I can think of that. He didn't just appear out of thin air and his soul had to inhabit another body. That's the only thing I can think of. It's still, it's still weird AF. A guy wished for a farm and he got cows. Yeah. In the and middle the, of the city. And the cows immediately appeared. Yeah. I think they could have just it's, had Chris Pine yeah, appear. It's still, again, the logic, it's like the more the logic of the, the MacGuffin yeah. goes on, the more it starts to implode on itself. And, and you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, it's a comic book film, just relax. And it's like, okay, that's fine. But if you had that mentality with every single movie, well, then you can just do whatever you want. And then you can't. Right. Then you can't then then just then do then whatever you want then. Yeah. Well, then there's no logic. Yeah. Well, then <laughs> screw it. It's like, well, then... 
then yeah. don't make up rules. Then right. just have what was it? what was it? Axe cop. Just have, <laughs> just have five year olds write your script uh, to everything, and let's just uh, say screw it now. <laughs> Whatever. It's I'm like, sure a lot of people out there probably think the, the the little kid that came up with the axe cop idea uh, wrote this movie as well. Uh, uh, I think another real I think another real big reason that why fans are disappointed and they hate this movie is because Patty Jenkins. Uh, this time around had full control. Mm. Uh, a lot of people complain that the Wonder Woman was perfection, but right at that third act, it became a CGI video game. And Patty Jenkins did not agree with, she did not want that, uh, but the studio wanted it, so she had to do it. This time around, now, now like I say, well, this time around, we got a CGI fight at the end. Oh. You know, obviously it's a little bit more earned with, with Kristen Wiig's character than Ares just showing up out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I did not hate Ares showing up and they had a CGI fight as much as everybody else did. Because I was so entertained and impressed with the first movie that I was not expecting it. So when it happened, I was like, oh shit, we get a little bonus fight. Mm-hmm. That's how I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of CGI heavy because you have gods fighting gods. So it's going to be CGI heavy. So I didn't hate it as much as everybody else did because I just looked at it. It didn't ruin the movie for me. That third act ruined the movie for a lot of people for some strange reason. Yeah. They hate Wonder Woman now. They're like, Wonder Woman was perfection. It was five stars until the CGI video game fight. I was like, she just using her powers, you know, and fighting Ares, who's the, the god of war. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was like I just like, oh, well, this is nice. We get a little bonus. I always wanted to see Wonder Woman fight Ares anyway. Yeah. But when it got to this one, I was just kind of like, well, all right, that happened. Yeah. Like it was. We were not insulted. We don't hate this movie again because what we said earlier, the trailers didn't really wow us. No. It I, just was like, well, this looks fun. Yeah, it's exactly. Hopefully, it's a fun sequel. It was exactly, that was our reaction. Yeah, so we went into the movie. We're like, the oh, movie well, it was, was fun. Exactly what the trailers presented, yeah. and it was like, well, that, yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be. But I get it though. I totally get people's hate for the movie. Yeah, I mean, I I can't been, argue against the hate. Really, I've, I can't. I've so. been. I've been the victim of going into a movie super hyped. Yeah. And, and it's happened. And it's happened before. Going in like so excited mm-hmm. and then coming out just so disappointed. Peninsula uh you know, among other things. <laughs> among other things. And then coming yeah. out and just being like pissed. Like just so disappointed. Yeah. So sad and, and yeah. angry and disappointed. Yeah. So I get it. I, I really get it. But you know yeah. but, but for us you know, we, we we had to let you guys know that was our mindset going into watching the movie. Yeah. So that way you understand uh, why we gave it an above average rating. We d- it's not a great movie. No. We didn't give it an above four. No. You no. Know, it's, but but uh, it's not you like. You can still watch like it and enjoy me, it. For me, it, it doesn't have like the problems of Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the clear problems of like Fanforstic. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have like the, like for me, like a lot of people have said this movie is so boring. Well, it was like yeah. for me. It's not boring like Electra. Right. It doesn't have the disjointed bullshit of something like Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance or Jonah Hex. Right. Um, mm. Yeah, it's yeah. not It's not like the total train wreck of those films, like no. Catwoman. No. It's not insulting like those movies. No. Um, it's very well made. Yeah. The action sequences aren't as badass as the original, but they're, they're well done. Yeah. You know, it's... it's, it's Nothing, I, I, I just, again, I could, it, it, this movie didn't rile me up to the point where I had to throw something at the TV. Yeah, again, there, there are things <laughs> that towed the line with elements of, of, again, like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with the potential to veer in the direction with the Electro character. And again, things that Captain Mistakes were made with the men suck. That they went in that direction a little bit, yeah. But I think this movie did it a little bit better, so it just didn't irritate me as much as those right, two films right. did. Like the Electro character was so poorly done in yeah. Amazing Spider-Man Two, and the all men are terrible and suck and girl power that Captain Mistakes were made did, which really irritated me. That that movie did horribly. The, this movie did both, and I think it just it just did it a little bit better. Yeah. So again. Yeah. It, it told the line, and it just, there's, there's made, it just made it to the finish yeah. line. There's a difference between being a little annoyed and fucking pissed off. It's like, I there's see what you difference. did. It's like Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> I see what you did. I see you did it. Yeah. But you did it just enough so that eh, you get a pass, but please yeah. don't do it anymore. Just don't do it worse. Like, don't. Right. Right. Can you just 
tone, tone it down a little bit. Do you I think? See, get it, do but. you think uh, people are now not as excited for the third movie now? I don't know. I mean, uh, is the doubt about think, Patty Jenkins? I think at this rate, because some people are now saying they hate this movie so much that some people are now saying that the first movie was a fluke for Patty Jenkins. Well, They're saying it was a fluke. Yeah, um, but this movie wasn't. I think I think what the, it might partly be because they like the movie so much. Maybe you know they like the, the first, first movie one. so much right. that you go in and I think people might forgive this movie a little bit over time unless right. they really never ever watch it again. If Star Wars Rogue Squadron turns out to be fucking awesome, they're gonna forget about Wonder Woman eighty four. <laughs> they're gonna be like, yes. Patty Jenkins, please come back and make the third Wonder Woman movie. I think that's what it's yeah. going to come down to. I mean, it, yeah, they're going to accept her back. I think sometimes when you go in just expecting so much and you just don't get what you want, yeah. you, you just you, the disappointment makes it seem worse. I don't think this movie is as bad as what people are thinking. It's like, no. yeah, I know the disappointment. I understand. I, 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 I totally get it. I, I get it, but yeah. it's just it's Peninsula. It's, yeah, it's yeah, you know, I get it. I've been insulted by 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 far worse. Yeah. Personally. Oh yeah. Um, There's way just worse. Just my opinion. Comic book movies out there. Um, but I thought it was well done. I thought it was well made. I thought it was solid. You know, after I watched it the first time, I texted uh, Sexy Sumo and he asked me, "Oh, how was it?" And I said, "It was well done. It was solid." Yeah, that was it. It's fine. It's fine. It's, just, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It's not. And it's okay to love it and and. and think it's amazing and like it more than the first movie. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. But I can't argue against people that hate the movie. Yeah. I can't. I understand. Yeah, but uh, for there. us. We've definitely been yes. there. And we get a nice, fun, heartwarming, it gave me a little bit of the feels cameo uh, when the credits start going. Yeah, we were, uh, it was funny because we were joking earlier in the movie. Um, we were really, we were like, where's the Linda Carter cameo, damn it? Yeah. You know, we didn't yeah. get anything from the first movie. And it's like, come on, she's still around. She's still alive and kicking. Yeah. You know, how many Lou Ferrigno cameos did we get in the Incredible Hulk movies back in the day? And it's like, come on, where's our Linda Carter cameo? Come on. And it was funny because when they were doing the flashback of Asteria with their golden armor and they were telling the story about how she held back, you know, they when they were, uh, when the Amazons were retreating and somebody had to, to stay to back. Hold the, on hold the line. And yeah. hold back the, yeah. the men and uh, the Amazons were retreating to Themyscira and how somebody had to remain on Earth and blah, blah, blah. And they gave they gave all of their armor to this one warrior, the, one of the strongest of them all. And you saw just these blue eyes. And I was thinking, <laughs> those eyes look very Linda Carter-ish, but I just missed it. I'm like, yeah, yeah you know, we'll see. And then credits start to roll. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're back. We're back in the movie. And I'm like, dare, dare I hope to, dare I hope. <laughs> And boom, we get yeah. our Linda Carter cameo as yeah. Asteria. Yeah. And it was really cute. And it was really sweet. I love sweet. how she turned around. She did a little Wonder Woman turn. And, it was, <laughs> and she, she did a line that... Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Or she something like that. she yeah. did a line that uh, Wonder Woman, that Diana had done earlier. And it was really cute. And I was yeah. like, yay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I got, she I got, deserved I got, it. I got a little something that I wanted. Yeah. But there's even people out there that hate that. They hate the cameo. Of they think it's a joke. They're like, yeah, they can, can you imagine Lou Ferrigno? No walking out with uh you know uh stan lee and the incredible hulk and he turns around and goes i've been doing this for a long time you know i thought it was fun so can't well, please everyone i apparently. guess i guess i'm just wrong on everything <laughs> we're wrong we talked about uh, watch the challenge instead if you hated it if you hated wonder woman watch the challenge <laughs> oh, man. and going uh off the rails yes like going on it's fun it's fun it's why yeah, you're here yeah. and remember we're both hot now. <laughs>